Hello everybody, this is Jim Ransom bringing you another episode of Morning Jim Poetry. This week is another collection of somewhat disconnected commentaries on how our modern civilization plays itself out in everyday life. To get you started, <clears throat> I'm going to read you my own take on how easy it is to get caught up in an increasingly robotic world. <clears throat> this is a poem, Automaton, that I wrote several years ago, and <clears throat> its subtitle is uh, A Machine That Is Self-Operating, A Robot. I awoke suddenly when my watch tapped me on the arm and said, Time to stand up and move a little for one minute. I heard George Winter playing music from the ocean while I was napping. In a daze, I struggled to my feet, overcome by the realization that I was now a victim of my own electronic nuisances, employed to entertain me, but happy to order me about. Inconsiderate things bathing me with sleep-inducing music on the one hand, and then, perhaps out of concern for my immobility, checking to see if I am still alive. <laughs> In our time, being monitored is no longer a thing confined to the terminally ill in hospital, or, or even prisoners released but followed with their ankle bracelets artfully connected to the police. No, we are all trailed by our many signals, messages sent to friends, Christmas candy ordered by computer, delivery services with Google Maps of where we live, also where we shop, where we jog, and where we work. Of course, some do escape from this consistent spying, and they are being criticized for it. Consider the homeless guy living under a bridge or on the street in Seattle without a phone or an Apple Watch or even a Fitbit. He is free to piss in the corner of an alley or sleep undisturbed under a bush and show up at the Salvation Army for lunch and a new coat. The climate is not too bad, and the voices in his head are no less soothing than the George Winter music. He has a kind of freedom. While well, I paid quite a bit of money to give mine away. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. <clears throat> I'm reading the poem uh, on the cusp of the second electronic revolution. You know what I mean. It's better known as artificial intelligence or AI. I can't help wondering how long it will be before I speak to the great unknown AI and say, write me a poem about AI and whoosh, there it is. <laughs> Next is a more imaginative poem in many ways. And its title is The Language of Joy. And it was written by um, a poet whose name is Jacqueline Allen Trimble. <clears throat> the Language of Joy. Black woman joy is like this. Mama said one day, long before I was born, she was walking down the street, foxes around her neck, their little heads smiling up at her and out at the world, and she was wearing the suit she had saved up a month's paycheck for after it called to her so seductively from the window of this boutique. And that suit she was wearing, it was wearing her keeping all its promises in all the right places. Indigo, matching gloves, 
suede shoes, dippity doo in blue, with tassels honey gold, and lord, a hat with plume to peacock, a conductor's baton that bounced to hip rhythm. She looked so fine, she thought. Louis Armstrong might pop up out of those movies she saw as a child, wipe his forehead and sing, ba da bee bop oh oh do de do 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 And he did. Mama did not sing, but she was skiddly doing that day, and the foxes grinned, and she grinned, and she was the star of her own Hollywood musical. Here was Sachmo, who had called Ella over, and now they were all singing and dancing like free people up Dexter Avenue. And don't think they didn't know they were walking in the footsteps of slaves and uh, over auction sites and past where old Wallace had held on to segregation like a life raft. But this was not that day. This was day for foxes and hip rhythm and musical perfection and folks on the street joining in the celebration of breath and holiness. And they did too. And color coordinated ensembles they kicked and turned and grinned and shouted like church or football game, whatever their religious preference. The air vibrated with music, arms, legs, and years of un unrequited sunshine. Somebody did a flip up Dexter Avenue. It must have been a Nicholas brother in a featured performance. And Mama was... Miss Lena Horn, Dorothy Dandridge, high stepping up the real estate, ready for her close up. That's when Mama felt this little tickle. She thought it might be pent up joy until a um, mouse squirmed out from underneath that fine collar over that fabulous fur, jumped off her shoulder, and ran down the street left my mama standing there on Dexter Avenue in her blue suit and dead foxes. And what did mama do? Everybody looking at her, robbed by embarrassment. She said, It'd be like that sometimes. And she and Sachmo, Ella, and the whole crew jammed their way home. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic poem. I really enjoyed it, and I hope I read it in the right way. <clears throat> um, and it's a sample of some parts of black America and, to say, the black culture, which is a lot different than the white. Let's face it. And trying to equilibrate the two in every way isn't going to work. I particularly liked it in the poem when she said, <clears throat> and she's sort of poking fun of, at us white people who are um, reading her poetry. And she says, <clears throat> um, They kicked and turned and grinned and shouted like church or football game, whatever their religious preference. <laughs> Would it be for football or for uh, the African Methodist Church on the corner? <laughs> That's it. The air vibrated with music, arms, legs, and years of unrequited sunshine. <laughs> I love it. That. This is such a musical poem, and it's got a tongue-in-cheek uh, manner to it, and it's got a, um, a kindness and gentleness to it uh, that you don't see in poetry 
either white or black very often. So uh, three cheers or even four for Jacqueline Allen Trimble and her poem, The Language of Joy. Okay, now let's just turn our attention to another poem by me, James Ransom. This is a poem which is a lot less excited than the one we've just had. A good closeout, a little humor, um, and it's based on a true story. I'll say something more about that. <clears throat> um, well, I'll say it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was inspired to do this poem after walking into the powder room, the newly remodeled powder room at my daughter's home last year. And <laughs> it didn't entirely work for me. But here's the poem. It's called After the Plumber Left. I tried out the new, what shall we call it? Powder room? Lou Anglais. Rest room. Plain Lou. The new wallpaper was engaging to the eye. The toilet flushed promptly and quietly. So the new marble sink holding antique brass fittings was my next stop. I turned on the left faucet. Handsome it was and let the water run over my hands, cold and colder. Ah, the Arctic cold, still cold after a count of 30. Turn it off. My blue fingers moved to the right faucet. I risked only a single digit, but the water was quickly warm and my hands soon red and clean. Oh, new washroom. How many fingers will your waters freeze before the taps are lettered? Cold left, hot right, please. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this day of variety and we'll bring yourselves back to see what we can cook up next week. I don't think it will be poetry written by AI but then, who knows? <laughs> you never know, do you? Bye now.